What's going on everyone? Steven here from techmaker.tv. We just got back from a quick break and we're gonna go ahead and pick back up with our note-taking application in this episode. This is technically part 18 and if you want to follow along completely from scratch you can do that over at www.techmaker.tv. This episode is gonna be a little bit different so I want to talk through how I think about picking colors for a new project and how you can kind of do that and do something nice without spending a ton of time on it. So that's actually quite a nice skill to have to be able to throw together something that looks pretty professional. I mean you know if you're a full stack developer nobody can really expect you to be a full-on designer but it's handy to know how to make something look decent. Uh, you know, maybe you're helping to launch a startup or you're working on a personal project where you're the only developer. Um, so you'd like to be able to make stuff look a little bit better than average. And I kind of want to spend some episodes talking about some of that. Probably not all back to back to back, but certainly a fundamental part of that is picking things like colors and fonts. So in this episode, we're going to kick off with color and I'll show you how I think about it. And I think actually Bootstrap in some future versions and maybe some other frameworks actually already do this fully um, for you so you don't even have to really think about it but in any case I'll just show you what I'm doing today and uh, I'll update you in the future if that changes so the screen that we're looking at here is our note-taking application uh, this is ultimately going to be the main page it's just some notebooks when you click in you see different notes and right now so the design right now is pretty straightforward and we've basically stuck with the default bootstrap colors. I think I may have put a custom color on this bar here or maybe the nav bar or something and that's why the grays kind of clash. Um, but in any case we really haven't done anything about it. So I haven't really fleshed out this design entirely but what I ultimately want this to look like is something like this. So uh, that blue outline shouldn't be there. So basically uh, just a nav bar um, with breadcrumbs and a toolbar over here and then the page you're working on. So this is obviously not a fully fleshed out design. It's just something I kind of threw together to kind of lay out the idea. It's basically how I do things. I, like I'm not a full-time designer at all. So if I need to do a layout for, in, in particular, a personal project, I'll always throw something kind of basic together that kind of communicates the idea. And then I'll fill in the gaps as I'm actually writing the code. So this is where we're headed. Now these colors, this is a monochromatic color scheme which I pulled from the colors over on materializecss.com. Um, so I kind of like, so Materialize is a framework, a design framework that was developed by Google. Um, I don't believe they actually created this uh, CSS framework here. But in any event, I believe these are all of the hex codes for the colors that they have in this framework. Um, and I think they pretty much, you can't obviously just grab any random colors and have them go together. Um, but it's a much more restricted color palette than having an essentially infinite a number of colors available to you if you're just picking your own hex codes. So I tend to start with something like this, which is much more rich than what's currently in Bootstrap. But it helps me get productive faster because I can just say, okay, I'm just going to use these colors. That's it. I don't have to play around with the exact shade of red or green or whatever that I want. I've just got a kind of a set and I can just go. Now down the road, would you hire a designer if your project becomes massively successful and have them nitpick every single little hex code? Or if you are a designer, you might do that. Sure. Why not? But to start, I like to kind of remove barriers to help me get going. So on that front, what I did is I set up a, a SAS file, or SCSS file in this case, um, as a gist, which I'll link to down in the description. But this is what I use in my projects. It's got all the colors here with all the different shades and accents and so on. And then it's got some SAS functionality. I'm not, sorry, I need to like open up the raw thing here, I guess. I'm going to copy all of this and create a new file. But in any case, um, we have these functions down here that essentially um, set up some different utilities for us, which I'll get to in a minute. But let's open up our code here, and I'm going to drop in inside of my JavaScript style sheets. I'm going to put a new file in here, color.scss. You can call it whatever you want. And then we'll need to just include that in our application. 
And uh, let me go ahead and do that at the top up here. So we'll say at import, um, let's just say color like that. And that should get everything set up for us. Let me make sure I save that and we should be good to go. So if my memory serves correctly, we have several different projects going on, but I don't think we've really written much CSS. It looks like that's about it. Um, okay, so let's go back over to the browser really quick. Let me just double check. So what I did to set up this color scheme, and you may or may not love this design, that's fine. Um, but in any case, Basically all I did is I pulled colors out of one single column, which is called a monochromatic design, when you essentially have one uh, color that you're basing everything on. We'll probably end up with some red and green somewhere for success and failure. But for the most part, we're gonna just stick to this one single column here. Now what I'm hoping to be able to do, and I, I haven't worked all this out yet, so we'll see where we land. What I'm hoping to be able to do is make it so that like if you follow along and you want to do the same kind of thing but you don't like the color I picked, you could just switch one variable and have the whole thing switch to like blue or teal or dark green or, or whatever. Um, so in any case, the main point of this video is I just want to show you how to actually use this color system. Um, so let's create a new style sheet um, and you can call it again whatever you want and in this case I think I'm going to call it theme. And um, let's just make sure that it's working here. So I'm going to, first of all, it won't be working because I need to actually import it. Um, so we'll import theme. And then in theme, let's just play around with how we can make this work. So if we look at our color file, let's go down to the functions really quick. So ignore these each functions for a second and just look at this or loops or whatever and just look at this m color so you could rename that i named that m color because i'm just it's you could think of it as my color or materialized color or whatever um but what we can do is say background color and then we can say m color and then we can say the name of a color so we could say something like blue and then we need to give it a shade. So we can say something like base, which should be the main. And I guess we should actually look at this really quick. So all these colors have a base color. They have light in five, four, three, so on and so forth. And I thought, yeah, most of the, yeah, the actual colors have accent colors as well, which you can go look on that materialized website to see what they are. Um, but if we make this say background color, in color, blue, Base. Let's go see what we get if we refresh here. Hopefully we get something because that would mean we have everything set up correctly. Cool, so we can see that this is now blue, obviously. We can change this to be Lighten 3 or any other uh, one of the shades and we'll get a different shade of blue, presumably. Okay, cool. So this should also play well with sort of built-in SAS function. So we should be able to do something like, let's say we're working with Lighten 5, I think is the lightest. Let's take a look at what that looks like really fast. So Lighten 5 is here. So that's almost, a like in this case, it just makes this gray look kind of muddy. Uh, anyway, but that's a light blue. Um, so what we can do is say Lighten and then give it an amount, so we'll just say like 10, and it's probably going to look almost white with that amount of lightening. So this this basically, yeah, I mean that does look essentially white. Um, in any case, what you can do is basically lighten and darken these things to your own liking if you don't have a color in the original set that you want. Um, so anyway, there you go. So let's go ahead and just comment that out. So the other thing that you can do, what page are we on over there? It looks like we're on pages show. So what, um, no, that's not what I want to see. I want to go to the application layout. And of course that looks like junk because my text coloring is wrong, messed up. Let's just look at how, you have to bear with the uh, syntax highlighting here. Let's have a look at the other things we can do. So because of those other 
uh, each loops that we have in there, we can actually do this. So we can say, let's look at that really fast to remind myself exactly what the syntax is. Where was that? Here, all the way to the bottom. Sorry for jumping around so much. So we should be able to give it um, a color name. Um, so you see here this dot color name and that says the background color or we can say color dash text and that sets a text color. And then we have some stuff down here with shades which kind of does a similar thing. So let's have a look at this. So if I just say blue, let's make a different one, purple. Um, let's have a look at what this does. So it's gonna crunch all that CSS change and then make a purple background. So what's cool about this is we can say purple, we could say yellow, and it's gonna quickly change. We can do darken three and add those two classes together and then that should actually give us a dark yellow. Um, it's kind of a weird yellow. Let me make sure that it's working how I'm expecting. So let's do like uh, blue and we'll do just blue. So we're back to blue, and let's do dark in five. I don't think there is a dark in five. Let's do four. So we get a really dark blue. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, in this case, I'm actually not going to go with um, with the inline classes because I want to theme this out here. And what I want to do is basically set up a variable and say something like theme color. And then in here, we could do something like... Um, let me actually see how this is going to work. I think we could do something like cyan, call it cyan, and then I don't want to darken. Um, well, this isn't going to be real just yet, but um, if we do theme cannot type, so theme color, okay, theme color, cyan, light, and five. Let's go refresh and see what that looks like. And hopefully we don't get any errors. Okay, so that is, I think that's actually the color in the background that I was imagining having over here. Maybe it looks a little bit different in Illustrator than in the browser, but it may also be all the other stuff around it. Okay, so I think that's all going to work exactly how I'm wanting it to. So basically what we're going to do in the next episode is uh, build out the theme in that design, and I'm going to use this theme color everywhere, and then use the lighten five or darken four or whatever to kind of set up all the various colors and then if you were to follow along at the end you could just change this to something like green and then the whole thing is just going to swap to a green color scheme so this is going to be kind of cool um, if you want to take this idea further you know the monochromatic thing is kind of interesting if you wanted to do something that had sort of two uh, complementary colors for example you could have a theme primary color and a theme secondary color I, you know, you could get into the sort of making this play nicely with all of bootstrap stuff, um, and maybe we'll do that, but I kind of want to keep it a little bit bootstrap agnostic, to be honest, um, for the moment. Uh, in any case, I hope that this has been interesting. I think it's always useful to have something like this. I'm, I'm a big fan of anything that removes thinking. You know, so if your primary job is not design, Personally, I think it's really good to have some tools like this where you can go, okay, let me just grab my color set and I don't even have to think about it. Maybe we just say, okay, we're going to go with blue and orange and then we have blue and orange already. We don't really have to worry about it. Um, you can always sort of upgrade that later and with the amount of colors there are, there's actually quite a bit of nuance that you can do um, without having to think too hard. So in any case, I hope that's helpful. Um, we're going to probably do a couple of work sessions that are just going to be on techmaker.tv to kind of get this design built out. And then we'll be publishing some more like stimulus reflex and uh, view component stuff coming soon on YouTube right after that. So with all of that said, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, going forward, we're going to be putting out new content every single day. So I will be talking to you tomorrow.